Ah, the Atari 7800 Pro System. A classic piece of Atari hardware that did okay, but never really reached the popularity that it deserved. I sort of missed out on the whole Atari craze when I was growing up. But my friend Chris, who lived down the street, did have an Atari 2600. And so I remember going down to his house, sitting around that tiny black and white TV, and playing those old classic Atari 2600 games. But the Atari 2600 and the Atari 7800 aren't all that dissimilar. After all, the 7800 can play 2600 games. This backwards compatibility was actually a great selling point for the system. Overall, the 7800 was a pretty sizable upgrade, at least in terms of graphics. Now, the architecture of the system is actually pretty interesting. Surprisingly, it wasn't actually made by Atari. Rather, Atari outsourced it to the General Computer Corporation, which was known for some really popular arcade games like Miss Pac-Man and Food Fight. There are a couple aspects of the 7800's design that are really worth pointing out. First, the CPU is a modified 6502, which runs at 1.79 megahertz. But the big thing was the upgraded graphics chip called the Maria, which really functioned more like an arcade machine than other home consoles. It was actually capable of running in a 320 by 240 resolution, which was a pretty high resolution at that time. However, most games still stuck with using it in a 160 by 240 mode. Also on board the 7800, you'll find Atari's old TIA graphics chip. This was used in the Atari 2600 for both graphics and audio, so it was included in the 7800 for backwards compatibility with the 2600 games. Native 7800 games, however, use the Maria chip for graphics. But to cut costs, the decision was made to use the TIA chip for audio on both the 2600 and the native 7800 games. So even though the 7800 games had upgraded graphics, the majority of them still used audio from the Atari 2600 era. Now I got this 7800 last year at Midwest Gaming Classic 2022. I think I paid somewhere around 30 or $40 for it. The guy who sold it to me gave me a joystick with it along with a copy of Food Fight. And this system's in pretty good condition, except for one thing. There's no power adapter. This normally wouldn't be a problem. I've made power adapters for tons of other devices. But the Atari 7800 has a non-standard power connector that you're just not going to find online for cheap. Poking around on eBay, you'll see these things going for somewhere between $40 and $80 which is more than I paid for the whole console. But all hope isn't lost, because believe it or not, I found an alternative. It turns out there's a flashlight whose battery charger has a very similar power connector. And you can get one of those replacement adapters for much less than an official Atari power supply. Right now on Amazon, they're going for around $12, but when I bought one a year ago, I paid only $9 for it. You can't just open the box and plug this thing in though, because the Atari 7800 requires a 9 volt power supply, and this third party adapter puts out 15 volts. So I'm going to cut off this weird power connector and splice it onto a 9 volt power brick. Now the first thing I had to do was figure out which prong of the connector should be positive and which is negative. And for that, I found the Atari 7800 FAQ which has a wealth of information. It shows that when looking into the power cord with the notch facing up, the left side is negative and the right side is positive. So when looking at the back of the 7800, this means that the right side of the connector is positive and the left side is negative. And so when I plug it in here, you can see that the side of the cable with the white stripe needs to have positive nine volts. Now I never throw away power adapters, so I have a big box of spares. 
but oddly enough, there were no 9 volt adapters in my box. At least not any that I wanted to sacrifice. So instead, I'll use an adjustable power adapter that I have set to 9 volts. Now this is just a temporary solution. I'm going to transplant this into a permanent 9 volt power adapter at some point in the future. All right, let the splicing begin. Okay, we're all done. So let's connect it to a multimeter and test the voltage and polarity. And it's reading positive nine volts, so I'm good to go. So let's just see if the power indicator lights up. All right, well, there seems to be at least some sign of life in this thing. Okay, so now here's the bigger test. I don't actually know if this Atari 7800 really works. Now, the guy who I bought it from said that it did, and I took him at his word, but because I didn't have a power supply with me, I couldn't actually test it. I connected everything up and stuck Food Fight into the cartridge slot. And now, it's time for the moment of truth. Hmm, nothing yet. Well, let me try changing the input channel on the TV tuner. Success! Now the image does look awful, but I'll do something about that later. For now, I want to try playing it and making sure the controller works.
Well, it's responding to button presses, so that's good. But this joystick has seen better days. I think it needs a good cleaning, and there's also some delay for my capture card. Even though the video output looks bad, I'm really pleased that the system actually works, and even more pleased that I didn't have to spend over $40 for a replacement power supply. I do need to do something about that terrible video signal though. And so in my next video, I'm going to rip out the RF modulator and replace it with the composite video mod. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this video, because I certainly enjoyed making it. And until next time, go make something cool.